The Xbox One S really impressed me when it came out. It was much smaller, as you can see, obviously, than the original Xbox One that came out. That looked almost like the size of, probably even larger, than some VCRs when they came out. Uh, but they managed to shrink down the Xbox One heavily, like heavily. I will say, when I would open Xbox Ones, the original ones, there was a lot of empty space inside. I pretty much looked at it and realized, yes, they can easily make this into a much smaller system. But I was very impressed with the slim form factor they went with and that they were able to include that large brick power supply inside of this system. In fact, if you look at the back, it simply has one of those infinity type power cords, those figure eight power cords that everything pretty much used up until this point. Uh, unfortunately, the 360 never really used one of these. It was always like, you always had that brick outside of it. Now the Xbox One S also kind of marked Microsoft's departure from the Kinect system, like little Kinect camera you'd get because there's no Kinect port on the back of this. Instead, you have to buy something that converts the back USB port to that. So of course, that I think they realized once again that the Kinect was not a success, much like they did with the 360, and they moved on with it. But really at this point, I'm very curious to open this. I've, I've never opened one of these guys. This is gonna be the first time I opened one, which will be really fun. Much like how, kind of how we did with the PS4 Pro. I think there's still a lot of people who are curious as to what is in here exactly and how they managed to make it so small. I did get this one used, so I'll probably clean it while I'm in there too, because I'm sure it probably could use a cleaning. Um, but this is, I think this is the blue special edition. I think it was a Gears of War bundle that came out. But either way, let's uh, let's open this guy up, guys. Now, as much as I would like these to be like all Phillips head screws, it's the next box, so I have my Torx driver set ready to go because I know how these things work. But right on the back here, you can immediately see we have pretty much a way of entry through a what appears to be just a standard warranty sticker. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that off. I assume we're gonna find uh, a screw of some kind underneath, probably a Torx screw of some kind, maybe like a T8. Uh, or hopefully a T10, because T10s are just uh, it's so much easier when they work across the board. T8 can get so small that it will start to actually strip the driver very easily. Um, and let's see what we have here. It's almost like a little piece of uh, piece of plastic that's kind of sticking out there. It does look like all the way around the edges here, there are also clips pretty much that are holding these in. Um, it looks like that goes all the way around the front and the back from what I can tell, so I have to pop all of these off here while we go through them. So let's go ahead and just start popping these suckers off just like that very carefully. They're pretty well by those. There we go. Uh, all right, so we have the, the bottom part off that are, like I said, very strong clips holding this sucker down. Um, and it looks like the button on the front for the sink is literally just a push button that then hits the front board here. There's a front board here that actually presses. So that's how you get that nice click. Um, otherwise, it looks very similar, if you see here, to the regular Xbox One, where it has the X-clamp portion with T8s and T10s around. So let's, I guess, let's just go ahead and take these all off here real quick. Looks like when you get kind of these screws out, which I assume are mostly the long ones, hold that in, the top portion in. The top portion becomes very loose, like you see here. So this should just kind of pop off. Um, again, there are some clips holding it down around the edges and especially on the front, because remember there is that face plate kind of on the front, so you wanna be careful there. And then it looks like there's just a few clips there holding it down. So the top portion is now freed. Um, this is where you might be able to take the time if you have like one of these Xbox Ones or even an older one to kind of clean up the vent here because you can notice even in the camera the dust that kind of accumulates there. And that's because of the way the fan works where it happens to push air through that and you end up with some dust follicles in there. So just, just a little, take a toothbrush to it, just a dry toothbrush and clean it right up, not a problem. So from there, we can actually see our pretty large fan here. Um, the Xbox One, the nice thing about the Xbox One is they went with a large fan that spins at a lower 
uh, the lower speed, and that's why the Xbox Ones tend to be kind of quiet, to be honest. Like, it's sometimes they're surprisingly quiet. Uh, the Slim is no exception. It's 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 not loud at all. So, um, fortunately, I took off all of those screws, and we can lift this up. Uh, I'm trying to figure out if it's like, okay, so it's different. The other Xbox One has a cable that uh, you have to be careful to pull out. So here we go. We're inside, and I can see right away we're using a Seagate hard drive. So it's, um, some people may think that's good, some may think that's bad. Uh, that's actually a Seagate hard drive there, two and a half, 500 gig of course. This is always the problem that people have with the Xbox Ones, is that if your hard drive dies, you're kind of in trouble, because it's pretty much impossible currently to replace these, uh, or at least it's not easy. And obviously Microsoft does not want you to go through all of that, and hard drives are prone to dying. It's not obviously unheard of for a hard drive to die. In fact, it's borderline common. So let's, uh, I guess let's start pulling this out. The hard drive is already kind of free because the screws that go through it hold it down. So that's the first thing I'm going to remove here is the hard drive. Looks like it's held in with basic SATA and then of course a proprietary power cord that runs to the adapter here. Um, nothing too crazy and of course it is held in with screws on the back. Now the interesting thing about these is, like I said, it is possible. So you could technically replace it with something like a, uh, like a solid state drive, for example. Um, but going from there, let's see what else we have. We can probably start looking at the power supply. I do know the drive usually is not is not held in well either. That usually floats and is kind of uh, dependent on those screws. All these screws I took out here, specifically these long ones, to hold it in. So with that, I guess we'll try to pull this drive out right here, guys. Um, let's see. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that does become free right away if I pull on it. So. There we go. Same deal. Um, it's using a proprietary power cord and then a standard SATA cable. I do like that it was mo it's mostly SATA now. That's great because before it was some crazy cables back and forth to make that work. Um, and looking at the front board where, so the way this works on the front here, you have this full board. This is the faceplate board. Uh, some people like to talk about it as being like the, the ring of light board or whatever it was on the 360. But this has your RF chip here that connects to your controllers for the most part. So let's take this guy off. Looks like there's four black screws, very similar, very similar to the ones that would be uh, holding those that X clamp down, the ones I took off already. So be careful not to get those mixed up, obviously. So I'm gonna take that off real quick. Four screws, real fast. And then from there, that board just kind of pulls right out like that. And it's kind of its own plug-in board. So it's nothing like, proprietary to it like it, it's not connected to it it's just plugged in if yours dies for whatever reason you can buy another one of these just slap it right on it'll work fine I've had to do that actually for quite a few of those original xboxes believe it or not the xbox ones um from there it looks like we can probably get to the actually the power supply also was dependent on those screws never mind there's not much holding it in um i do see just a standard uh oh wow that's Oh, huh, that's interesting. Let's take a look at this real quick because it looks like it's simply using one power cord. It's not using, usually what you'll do is you'll have kind of two spikes coming out to control like the heavy ground and the heavy, uh, the heavy 12 volt. This does not have that. It looks like it's pretty much dependent on a single power cord, which is actually a little surprising to me. Now there's no, oh man, they always do this. They put a clip like this happens a lot. The clip to release is on this side. So to get in there, it's a pain. You have to use some kind of tool. In this case, I'll just use, I guess, a, I guess a, a screwdriver to kind of push down on it. I just, I just don't like when they do that. I know they don't think a lot of people will be in here, but still. So this is the entire power supply now. Um, again, shocking, because if you keep in mind, the power brick that we had on the old one was massive. So let's take a look at that in camera two, and you can see just how, <laughs> like it's tiny now. That is the power supply. So I, again, good on Microsoft for making this happen. Um, what do we have here? It's a uh, do, 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 do. 12 volt, 10 amp. So it's a 12 volt, 10 amp power supply. Um, that's pretty strong. That's not a weak power supply, but it's, it's so small. They did such a good job with making everything here smaller. So good for them. Down now to the, to the last part, which of course is our fan and our chip. Now to get this board out, it should mostly be free for the most part. Um, sometimes they kind of sneak a screw in here or there. Of course, we have to take the Wi-Fi board off. I don't know why I forgot about that. 
uh, Wi-Fi board right here. This is what controls, of course, your internet connection, things like that. I'm a little surprised they don't have any antennas coming off because the other one, they used antennas, um, but I guess they just don't need it for this, uh, this particular model. So let's, uh, let's get this guy unscrewed real quick. Three screws, of course, not very long. Um, seem to be very, uh, very standard screws, much like the ones that, uh, that are used in the X-clamps and of course the front faceplate board, yes. Um, so it seems like they only really had to use three screws for this entire, uh, entire setup, actually, which is also good. The less, the, the, like, the easier you can keep it by making the screws the same, one, they'll save in manufacturing costs, obviously, and two, it makes my job easier not to have to go scrambling for drivers. In this case, I've only really had to use two, a T10 security and a T8 security Torx bit. So um, I'm very happy when they decide to do that. I mean, in a perfect world, obviously, it would be all Phillips heads and I wouldn't have to be doing this. But you know what? If Torx is cheaper for them to get on a manufacturing standpoint, I'm fine with it. Not that big of a deal. Just run out to Lowe's or Home Depot or a hardware store and get a set and you're good. Um, of course, security bit of court are the ones that have the, like, the tiny little dot hollowed out. So make sure you get the right ones. So a lot of people forget about that. Um, all right, so we're good on that. Um, this, again, just pops right off. Very similar to that front faceplate board. So we're good on that as well. Let me put that over here with that faceplate board. <clears throat> and now I'm trying to see if there's anything else really holding this. Nope, okay. <laughs> Piece of plastic that just holds the front. Uh, again, uh, to accommodate the screws that go through the front. I'm just double checking around here to make sure there's nothing crazy. In this case, we do have a USB port going through the front here, so we have to be careful. The back has to appear to have to come up first, and then that'll slide out. So always make sure you're keeping an eye out for anything like that. You can see this USB port actually goes through, and the metal, if you try to rip it out from the front, you could damage that USB port. So in this case, we wanna go from the back up. So let me just double check to make sure there's no screws anywhere we're missing. No, we are good. So I made a mild discovery while I was trying to get this board out. There, This front clip on the front that I thought was part of the case is separate, holding that front USB port in. It actually pops out and then you have a path for that USB port and that's what this whole thing was basically being held in by. So after popping that out, um, it's coming right up and it's now free. So the full motherboard is now out. The case is off to the side now and we can get a look at this motherboard, which looks honestly very similar to the regular Xbox One motherboard. It does not look that much different. Um, we do have our south bridge here, which is very large. These do tend to go bad though. Uh, I've actually had to replace and reball a couple of these. And we have our entire setup here. Let me pull this fan up and then we'll take a look underneath. So that of course is that awesome X clamp. You wanna be careful when you pop it off because you don't wanna slip and cut the board. And here we go. This just comes right off there. The big fan is free. Now the way it works, obviously it has like a fin array here and then a very large surface. It's mostly aluminum with copper pipes going through that then of course the fan just cools straight up there. This one's surprisingly clean compared to what I, what I thought it would be when I first uh, got this entire system. Here we go. The compound is noticeably dry, which is kind of surprising because this is not an old system. This bundle I think came out in uh, I want to say October. Um, so this is not an old system right away. Um, but the chip is right here. Let me get some stuff. We'll clean this off and then I'm going to replace it with some MX4 just to help it out a little further. So I managed to clean up all the old compound uh, pretty well actually. Just, you know, you can use either an old shirt, for example, that's mostly cotton or you can use tissue paper or toilet paper. Any of that stuff works. But the old chip itself, or the new chip that's on here is pretty small. Um, compared to like the regular Xbox One chip, this is very small. They did a great job shrinking this system on a chip and making it that much smaller while increasing the frequency on it. So I have to give them props for that. That's actually pretty cool um, engineering wise for them to do that. Uh, otherwise though, what we have here is pretty straightforward. We have all of our RAM surrounding this chip because you can see all the traces here have the chip accessing all of that memory going around it. So they opted for a lot of small chips. Now, of course, this should be eight gigs of DDR3 memory. So you can see the amount of modules around it that they split it into. And if you look at like a uh, memory stick, these are the modules that are on that. As you can tell, this is more system memory than say GDDR5, which if you look on say a PS4, you'll see that they look a little different. Now these are, after counting, these are 16 uh, memory modules. So I would assume they'd be 
pretty much 500 megabytes each to give you uh, eight gigs. And uh, again, that just helps because the CPU can at least access several memory modules at once to make it work at least close to the PS4. I mean, the PS4 has faster memory by a good bit, but the Xbox One can at least still hold its own in most cases with lowered resolutions. So with that, guys, I'm going to add this compound back on and then I'm going to fully reassemble this thing and we'll check it out, make sure everything still works. So let's, let's get that done. All right, so our Xbox One S is all back together. I'm gonna go ahead and get the TV over here, we'll plug it in and check everything out real quick. Okay, so we have our Xbox One uh, booting up here. Now, of course, the Xbox One takes forever to start up, which can be kind of annoying, but uh, fans running. I can hear the hard drive spinning up now, so everything seems fine. I just wanna make sure it gets to the menu because there can be errors beforehand if there is an issue, and we're in. There's Phantom Dust, yep, I was just doing Phantom Dust. <laughs> And there you go guys, controller synced up, um, everything's good. So yeah, that's the Xbox One S, uh, again, the, I guess the, the slim version of the Xbox One. This is the Blue Gears of War edition. I hope you guys enjoyed a look inside this thing. It's kind of cool to see how they were able to shrink it down and make that power supply seriously like, like tiny. It's very cool to see that kind of stuff. The chip is much smaller and the system overall is just more efficient, does not pull as much power. So. That's great. Uh, I hope that the Scorpio is still a similar form factor. If it's larger, that's fine. I just I like the sleek and, and the much smaller Xbox One S as opposed to the very large Xbox One. That's it for now, guys. I will see you next time.